Hey, I'm Nick Catholic Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020, career mode episode number 66. First of January on 2024, new season, just escaped relegation all the way down to continental level. We will be continental pro this season, thanks to last minute uh, leveling up by Carlos Rodriguez and Kevin Vermark, both going up one level on their average and doing just, just enough to go from just missing the bubble to just making the bubble that is Continental Pro. Brief, brief look here at the team uh, and kind of what we're in for for this season. It's definitely going to be a season of growth and uh, specialties among riders. We're going to try to get a lot of time uh, of all the new guys. Uh, really, all but one of them is going to work out. The one that's not going to work out, uh, Denny Ginn, uh, two to five on his potential, pretty low. Uh, there was a couple unknowns, but he was the one who didn't pan out too well. But other than that, uh, really high potential for most of these guys. Uh, we should see some pretty rapid development. Speaking of development from the end of the season till now, turn of the year, Alves Machado has leveled up. He's now 75-77 in the sprint, getting that much better. And especially as a Continental Pro team this season, uh, we might actually win a sprint or two. Speaking of, Amonitoglu, I think he was a 71. Now he's 72. His sprint is a 77 with acceleration of 74. So depending on race day condition, you can really go with either one of these guys with the other one as a very, very strong lead out combination of the two like i said might finally combine for some wins I, I think we've only managed one or two sprint wins have we even managed that i i don't think so at least not proper we we've done it uh with the random breakaways like the champs Elysees at, at the tour de france uh the last place you would have expected for that to suddenly happen and work uh but there's been little bits of leveling up across the board. And you can see our lowest is just a few guys at 69, one rider at 70. Everybody else is in that 71, 72 range realistically now. So uh, very, very consistent up and down the team. Only a couple riders, even over 25. Uh, Bart at 27, Grant again at 27. Lopez now 26. Lopez. Well, he's not really going much of anywhere with his low potential, but uh, most of these guys have a lot of room for growth. So there's only kind of a few riders on the team that, that, that need to uh, find a new home. Uh, otherwise, we're going to look to retain most of them. And of course, for Mark now signed up to another three-year deal. So that's going to be really nice hanging on to him. We'll continue to see his development uh, and really, really become capable of winning a lot of punchy climbs. Depending on who we're up against, he is capable of grabbing quite a few wins this season, uh, especially after leveling up in that 78 hill rating now. Nice, strong stamina resistance. Uh, that's going to go a long ways. Rodriguez, I don't know where you get off calling him a 74, other than that he's a decent time trialist. Uh, he's going to be our GC guy when there is hills involved. He's not going to do anything world tour wise because his mountain ratings is 70, but lower level races, he could get some results. Uh, but how many lower level races are we going to focus on this season? Actually, how many races are we going to focus on this season? Probably all the sponsored ones, and that's going to be about it. So uh, it's going to be a quicker season as we try to rebound. And I don't think there's much of a chance that we're going to develop to the point of climbing to World Tour next season. I don't think we're anywhere near that kind of stage. What I do expect is to not just make the bubble to Continental Pro. I think. The goal for this season is uh, re-sign anyone with high potential, let anyone with low potential go, and then sign a couple new riders right up our alley, uh, maybe even bank a little bit of cash for the next season because this season it's going to be more about kind of affirming our position 
as a Continental Pro team. Uh, speaking of contracts, here is the ones that are expiring. Rodriguez, Alves Machado, that's definitely one I want to re-sign. Uh, Moreno, Barta, Jermon, Garrison, Granigan, Lopez. So we do have eight expiring contracts. That's, that's a bit to deal with. Uh, and there isn't a ton of money in these guys, except that we do see for the first time, we do have a few of these guys that are a little bit above minimum. Lopez, 3,500. Uh, we have 2,800 in Barta, 32 in Moreno, and 56 in Rodriguez. So there is a little more money at play this time, plus whatever we're going to get in a sponsor increase. We'll find out about that as we move forward one day, January 2nd. Back to the attributes, and here is kind of what we're in for this season. Mountain, yeah, not good. Right? Uh, not terrible, but not good. A lot of low 70s. Hills, a little better off for Mark and Eric, but can compete. Time trial. Uh, Rodriguez, Barta both continuing to develop. We add Denny Ginn. Uh, Ginn is that one with that low potential. Uh, David Killen's good, though. Uh, we should see him surpass uh, Ginn quite soon. Uh, kind of same. A little better off prologue-wise as a team. Cobble rating. Uh, Anthony Telford has continued to develop. He's still only a 71, but he, he was, oh gosh, what was he? 65, 66? Uh, just a short while ago. So he, he's developed quite a bit. Uh, and as he continues to add some cobble rating, he'll be effective in some races. But he has nothing to support it other than a little bit of stamina. Uh, Mateo Jorgensen, a little better all around. Uh, I expect more from Jorgensen, but both of these guys are classics. Uh, Alves Machado now up over 70 when you add in his sprint one. A light cobble race with a couple you know, lighter sections in the last 20, 30K. Uh, he can really compete in those as he can kind of get through them with support of one of these guys. So Alves Machado might be able to grab a win in a easier classic. Of course, then in the sprints, Monotoglu and Elvis Machado are the guys, and they continue to develop. Uh, only two support riders this year as we let Owain go. So Granigan, Jermon, those four will all, virtually always race together this season. Uh, Eric Butt, even though he's a puncher, he's probably going to be that fifth leadout man more often than not. As always, you set the preseason up for success by putting everyone at very high and then just properly maintaining that throughout the season. First glance at the top objectives and I have a feeling we're going to have a pretty easy time this season realistically. Top five, Strata for Yankee. Uh, it's not going to be easy, but it's not going to be hard to be top 10 most likely. KBK, top five. UAE Tour, top five. That's not one of the hardest races that you're going to go up for. Just a few punchy hills, and we're good with that. And some sprints to stay on top. You grab a few seconds here and there, and top five is pretty manageable. Top ten at uh, that, no problem. And top ten at Perry Tour. So you're looking at... The, the hardest objectives being easy to achieve. We have a super popular rider in Kevin Vermark, so we throw him in on a bunch of those races. Even when you fail, sponsor is not that unhappy. Uh, we have a high estimation of max potential with this sponsor. And speaking of turning my attention, averting my eyes for the first time, I've avoided looking. Here's what we get for that success. And we're looking at a pretty solid increase another 18,000 to go up a level. So it's finally starting to accelerate, pick up a bit. 18,000. I think we're going to have no problem hitting super success this season, especially based on that first set of objectives. It's not a bunch of wins, 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 where wins are hard to come by. Top fives, top tens are far more manageable. And again, with... Uh, Rider with the popularity of Kevin Vermark and having 
a decent number of Australian riders, and we'll get a look at that here in just a second. Uh, our squad evaluation, I think, will grow. It's starting low, but it should grow. I don't see why it would be so low. Uh, but the registered riders part, that's going to be quite high. And the results look like it's probably going to be manageable as a whole. Let's see. San Juan, top five. Stage win, Tour of Columbia, but come on, half star. No problem. Uh, stage wins on these, but they're all low profile. The big ones are far more manageable. Looks like we'll have at least three World Tour races this season. And we may squeeze our way into a couple others. I mean, we are coming out of being a World Tour team. But our profile is quite low as far as Continental Pro goes. Uh, meaning, I wouldn't count on it. Uh, we got some stage wins there towards the end, but those are all after uh, the july 31st deadline so not worried about any of those either so the rundfert top five balabies belgium top five stage win at cycling tour of turkey but it's only two star so yeah i think we're gonna have a fairly easy time with the sponsor objectives this year throw a kevin remark in each of those and we're already going to be well covered on registered riders uh, we'll grab noteworthy results no problem they love Kevin Vermark. Uh, <laughs> we have no known writer within Australia. I grabbed a few guys, but they hate that none of them are popular. Okay, we'll work on that. We will work on that. Uh, let me check in on that, actually. So here are my... We got Berwick, Killen, and Johnson side. Uh, Berwick with some potential. He is an unknown. David Killen, he is an unknown with good potential. And Zachary Johnson, an unknown with good potential. So we'll just have to get those guys a couple little results and they'll become known. We'll make it happen. 2nd of January is always the longest day of the year. Not in terms of daylight or anything like that, but in terms of how long it takes you to get through the things you need to do to start the year right. You've got to get your initial planner set for the races to come, and then you've got to get your training schedule set for all your riders. Uh, handling things through the AI naturally, you're never going to get much out of your team. That's actually what I did at the end of the season, last season, the last month. I didn't bother with the calendar. I let the AI handle it because we were done. And you know what we ended up with? That last race, every single rider had a negative race day condition. So, yeah, thanks, Gabe. Thanks for your help. Thanks for your support. Uh, our first sponsor objective is right away with our first actual race, National Road Championship for Australia. We're going to send our three new guys to that. Uh, but no expectations as they're all 70-71 overall. Completely unknown. Uh, good result that day, though, could certainly boost the profile of one of those guys. So I might actually participate in that race. We'll check out three of our new uh, riders on the team. And all three have some decent potential. So uh, they all could be heading up pretty quick on that scale and getting into the mid-70s before too long. But anyway, the Vuelta a San Juan International, the Argentine race, is the first objective on the calendar. And stage five is the key one to watch out for. It is a mount top finish. It's not a major climb, but it's serious enough that keeping a top five is going to be difficult on that day. Also, 11 kilometer, we'll call it a prologue, plus a, a punchy one on stage two. Lots of times to go out and grab a few seconds, and we might work to do that because we're going to need it. Uh, but we're going to have to focus on, of course, first step is getting the most popular rider in there. So there's Vermark. He's got a real shot on stage two, but he's not a good enough climber for stage five. So that means we're going to need a couple guys capable of a couple different things. One, well, we have Carlos Rodriguez, who's really good on time trial and can climb decently well but uh at a 70 71 that's not a great climber there's a chance that he's gonna get dropped so he's one of the ones where time is gonna be nice and could certainly be helpful but then we need more than just that 
Uh, we need our strongest climber, which is Zachary Johnson. 74. That's yeah, not great, but it's something. And I think we're going to need kind of nothing but climbers to surround. Though, don't we want a sprinter? Don't we want to go for a stage? Maybe that can help us out. It's only six riders we can bring to this race, though. That's tricky. Uh, bringing a sprint team to that one's not going to do us much good at all. In fact, I think realistically, we kind of just have to support the climb. All for one stage, kind of bypass the other stages. Actually makes a lot of sense. So support the climb. Rainsford and Berwick are the other two best climbers. So let's get them in there. And there's your first sponsor objective. Tour of Columbia stage win for that one. Team time trial to open 14K. Maybe that's where we go for it. What, who are my guys there? Well, we already have Kevin for Mark. I mean, he's not going to help us out much, but maybe I can bring six time trialists. All right, well, you've seen this all before. We're quite a few seasons in. This task takes, well, it takes a long time. <laughs> it takes a long time, uh, but it's boring to sit through all of that. So that's just a taste of what's to come. Eight to 11 teams for each of these, uh, well, mostly classics. Uh, so a lot of teams, uh, at least half. A little more than half of the Continental Pro teams try and get into all of these uh, events means it's going to be pretty hard. We've already gotten a response on about about about, about four or five uh, that were just straight no's. So they're not even interested in keeping us on the list, let alone choosing us from among others. Uh, Cyanide Trophy, as in... The, the writer of the season for last year, it was Julian Alaphilippe ahead of Sivakov and Theo Daly, the surprise world championship winner. Uh, I would have taken Sivakov, but Alaphilippe was the points leader. And of course, our final ranking was 37th, and 39th and above made it to Continental Pro, so we were only just inside. And that's kind of that primary reason why I don't expect us to get uh, really outside of what we already have. Uh, in terms of offers for those World Tour races, the few that our sponsor was able to get us into. Uh, but we are now into mid-January, and our first race of the year. This is the National Road Championships for Australia. I have three weaker riders who it's really hot, so uh, they, along with the rest of the field, are expecting about a minus one. Uh, there might be a couple riders targeting this as one of their objectives of the year, uh, but they're certainly not going to be on a fitness peak at this point as the game isn't set up in that manner. Uh, you're not going to have a fitness peak by the 12th of January, no matter what you do. You, you might be building towards it, but you're not going to have it. Which means we're in with a shout. It's a little bit punchy on the day. We've got three guys that can climb a little bit. So we'll see if they can uh, still be there at the end. Uh, how are we doing on downhill? 65, 67, 71. So Sebastian Berwick will essentially ride for him, and we'll see if we can attack that final descent uh, with a lead out from the other two and you know, maybe get a top 10 anyway. All right, so we're already just inside 100K to go on this simple looping circuit, but that climb climb just hard enough and the chase, the, the desire to not allow a breakaway to get off the front for this one has been pretty serious to the point where we're actually already starting to see some yo-yoing in the peloton. Half the group was left behind there momentarily and fatigue, definitely a factor. Killen is uh, minus four today. He's definitely gonna protect Johnson who's on that plus one. Uh, Berwick 
gonna hang in there. Not gonna be easy. First rider out the back, and I don't think we're ever gonna see them again. 68k to go. Here we go. Next attack. This is the uh, first late attacks. Luke's Hamilton among them. Those four riders pulled out a minute 38 already. That's that's gonna be tough to catch. And the next group of riders starting to uh, drift off the back end a little bit. Down to 57k. I will get water this time partway up this climb. It's a quick one, and you can see we're starting to blink red at 80. We're gonna have to speed up a little bit. <laughs> We only have four times to go up the climb. Killin, let's go get that water now. It's a very, very small field. I'm not sure why Killin hasn't handed water over. There it goes. All right, three times left to go up the climb. Let's set this up to about 84 now. Those four riders have pulled out to over two minutes. Like I said it's gonna be a tough, tough catch to bring those guys back. They could be cru 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 cruising towards victory. Uh, ultimately, I'm looking for a top 10 though, so. If they're gone, they're gone. Two more times up the climb. Let's set this up for some increased pace. Four minutes, yes, those guys are gone. Top four is already secured. Now we're racing for fifth place. Finish line is getting close. The riders have just passed the 15 kilometers road sign. 18k for us still. We're definitely behind things. There's an attack in the leading group. Some riders were not giving it their all and sharing the pace. All right, we're gonna gel up with Killen. There's now just 10 and kilometers. Here comes left. the attacks pushing for the fight for fifth. Okay, Berwick, gel up. And off he goes! He's giving it one last go! Leaders attack each other. Hamilton going for it. Johnson to follow Berwick. To follow Killen. Killen. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, you can see NTT also with a very, very strong Australian presence. Dang, that's a lot of Australian writers here that we got to compete with. Here comes O'Connor, Stannard, Earl, there's Yates, all with NTT. Red bar gone for Killen, but he's hanging in there pace-wise. Uh, it's the descent that I'm mostly interested in. Left. Though Berwick's kind of that best guy for that, but he's got that minus one that I'm kind of going, oh, great. All right, we don't want to drop back too far. Killing, go ahead and jump into the back. Ber Berwick's turn now, under 6K to go. Top four are long gone. Berwick's red bar gone, but he's still out there in a strong spot. And uh, they're off, switch it's the going order to be here. very fast. Into Johnson to lead out Berwick. Berwick will recover just slightly. 3k to go, but here comes the uh, finish. That's just fantastic. Lucas Hamilton ahead of he Sam Crow. Really strongest in the uh, leading group. To get into that. 2k Johnson attacking. Berwick final K killing. All right, here we go. Can we get? Well, we got the top 10. Johnson definitely top 10. He's gonna just miss top five. Really good result otherwise. Robert Stannard takes fifth. Caleb View in sixth. Zachary Johnson, seventh place. That's good. Berwick almost squeezes into the top ten as We're well. But we got a top ten all day in the national championship right at the beginning of the season. Ahead of a, quite a few strong riders. Ben O'Connor, Jack Haig, McCarthy, Henley, Robert Power. It's stage two at the Vuelta San Juan International, more than so the two Argentina race. Them. Some team managers mustn't appreciate the fact that there is a breakaway, given that the pack has increased its speed. I think I might actually have won this one last season, uh, possibly the season before, but I do believe it was last season. I, I know how. 
I definitely know how tactically to make this one work. Uh, we have a small breakaway, minute 40 on them. They should get caught pretty soon. And while that catch is happening, we'll see the kind of the final run. Here's that 5K to go banner. Uh, the finish is on. slightly different than the run in. We're going to turn one way after the bridge, uh, where the finish will turn the opposite direction. But this is the climb. It's short, it's steep. It's technical through here. You got four quick switchbacks. There's the top. And then you're going to take a right oh my, with a uh, quick left hander the to the finish. It's a little more uphill there. You can see how just that little climb does enough to split this field, but it comes back together. It keeps coming back together uh, as we set ourselves up for this final run 21K to go. Now, for this race, it's about the final GC position with a big climb and a time trial. So I need Rodriguez to have a good time. I need our top climber, Johnson, to have a good time. Both of them have minus three the today. It's However, it's short and punchy, and both of them the should be able to get over to that. Line. So for Mark, is going to lead those guys out uh, for that final last little run, or at least through that climb. Uh, we're going to need somebody for the flat section in between. Those are the two we focus on. GC wise as we're seeing new attempts at breakaways here with about 12k to go. We'll be lining things up fairly soon. Alright, this is a good time to sort that out. Alright, so Rodriguez, I'm going to put him on the back and then hope that he can hang on. Johnson's the main one we want to ride for though. Uh, for Mark would be the guy to lead him out. However, I need somebody for the flat who can climb like Rainsford. So we'll get Rainsford behind Vermark. We'll get Johnson behind Rainsford. Vermark will get us up that first climb and really push the tempo and see if he can get us off front a little bit. And then we need, well, what do we have? <laughs> Gin, uh, who is punchier than Berwick. So there's that. Berwick will use you up first. Make gel up on him. We want to get out front. Establish tempo. Give ourselves a shot on this stage today. Uh, only 10 kilometers left. Boltnik, or Boltink, the only rider who is away. Uh, but we are seeing Tim de Klerk. The pack is back on level terms hurting. with the breakaway group. We're not group. quite there yet, so we don't need to go too hard yet for Berwick. This is just getting us out front. It's a skinny road, so you need to start out front. 5k to go to the climb, Gin, and remark for the climb. There are just five kilometers so left. Just one rider burn to get us there. We're already starting to go slightly uphill. All right. And now on to Gin. Gin. We want to go go hard, but we want to save just a little bit for the finish. Yeah, Gin's doing a little damage, especially to Johnson. We don't want to drop Johnson. We just want to be in that prime position. There's Alaphilippe. I'm assuming that's Alaphilippe. Okay, for Mark. And the final sprint is off. Who's going to be the sprint. first of the line today? Okay, it's survival of the fittest. Sprint. And evolution doesn't seem uh, to favor those in the rear. For There's Mark's going to win the stage. Well, nobody can dispute that. Alaphilippe second. It was very well Gid. deserved. Rainsford. Here's our Johnson Rodriguez. This, 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 this. No problem for those guys. We might have time separation, but I doubt it. It's really close. We open uh, with a win. So Kevin for Mark, and he beats out Julian Alaphilippe to it, but that's because Alaphilippe was riding solo, and I wasn't. Team sport makes a huge difference. The tail enders are still correctly. coming in. Rodriguez, Johnson, in fact, the whole team in the top ten, other than Berwick, who finished thirteenth. Oh no. <laughs> and we'll see some time separation. Some. I don't know how much though. And just in case you missed them, here... No time separation at the top. Nothing until 76th. So, yeah, not much in time separation. Uh, but for Mark and Ginn, we'll both have some time bonuses. Pascal Ackerman, Jasper Philipson, some time bonuses in the sprints at the beginning of the stage. 
Oh, right, right, right. Last stage. Last stage. This is already stage two. The base time is 15 seconds. So, Ackerman took 10, plus some time bonuses here and there. Intermediates, last stage, this stage, along with Philipson. So, for Mark with 10 second time bonuses, and 5 behind. And we should have 76, yeah. 76 riders in contention. Stage three, and this is the time trial slash prologue. It's only 12 kilometers in length, so much closer to using your full prologue. And time gaps are actually pretty big here. So this is a bad sign for Johnson, who's a 64-63 prologue time trialist. So with the plus one today, he's looking at probably about a 64 and a half rating. Uh, you head into a little bit of a headwind and then finish up with a little bit of a tailwind, but you go slightly downhill and then slightly uphill. So it just about kind of washes out uh, the difference between the two, but I think you can probably gain a little more time on the back end. Looks like 76 most of the way. You can go 77 part of the way. Uh, Berwick was a minute and a half down just from that, but of course Joseph Berry and Filippo Ghana uh, very, very quick time trial. It's Johnson, 41st at a minute 31, same time as Berwick. Here comes Rodriguez. He's the one who could and should put in a pretty decent time, except he's got a minus freaking three today. So uh, his prologue drastically hurt. He should have about a 76.6 .6 average between those, plus strong resistance, and yet he's all the way down in the 73, 70, 44, 44, 70 five kind of range that's going to hurt his time significantly uh, he should be top 10 even with this nastiness uh for the condition today he should still be top 10 rainsford getting ready to set off but i'm not worried about rainsford i'm very much worried about rodriguez we'll take him all the way to the line it looks like the 77 should be the tempo that'll push right to the line now 99 attack the end 11th, 46 seconds down, uh, would have been top five for sure if he hadn't had the negative race day condition. Rainsford's going to be down on time a bit, even though he's tolerable in the discipline. Again, uh, oh, look again, yeah, 78, buddy. Let's go, 81 on that prologue, 78 on the time trial. So that should have uh, come out to just about an 80 resistance at a 75. Uh, you know, well, kind of overall, that'll that'll average out pretty dang well. For Mark, uh, could put in a decent time today as well. But yeah, Gin, Gin should have an excellent time here. Uh, I should expect that he'll be top five. Rodriguez down to 14th overall. As we're approaching kind of those last top riders, Gin was sixth place entering this one. And was that right before the end? He gets fifth place, 17 seconds down. Uh, ahead of Alaphilippe. Wow, Alaphilippe, how did he manage that kind of time? Okay, for Mark, pushing, pushing, pushing. Okay, 99. Attack, 44th, minute 14. So, uh, Gin with excellent time and actually a decent climber. Climber, 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 climber. So I think we're going to be riding for Gin here at the end. Rodriguez will support him. So Gin is now the leader for the rest of this race. We have one climbing stage to go, and he's our second best climber. So that's your man. Joseph Berry with the stage. Mikhail Bjorg second. Filippo Gata. Those guys aren't the greatest climbers, meaning Gin is actually one of the best climbers out there. Ala Philippe is going to be a favorite, but Gin, uh, Pogachar. <laughs> 25 seconds down, he's obviously uh, also a favorite. But if we can hang on to a top five with Denny Ginn, there's there's a chance. Got a chance on this one. Now, that's all the time I have for right now, though. We'll come back and finish this up on our next episode. Like I said, this season is going to go much faster, much faster than last season. We will keep an eye on some of the scouting this season, as that's going to be one of the big things. Again, I've got the eight expiring contracts, and it's not... 2500 each so i mean that's already 20,000 
uh, but then you're going to add in a little bit more for the over the tops so it's about 25,000 in money that's going to free up plus we have about an 18,000 increase in our budget oh my goodness we actually have a little bit of money to play with this season and we're getting well we were getting higher up the totem pole we've dropped down the order a bit in ranks so it's going to be a little harder to convince some guys this season uh, we'll see when that first one comes up I'm done for this episode i'm Kathleen gamer thanks for tuning in be sure to hit that like button i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there and bye for now